Hello, my name is Matthew Dalitz and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of The Neuropsychotherapist. Why is memory reconsolidation such a big deal for psychotherapy? Transformational change is what we as therapists would like to see happen every time we have to see a client. That aha moment when the client has a revelation about what is really driving their thoughts and behaviours and suddenly they change. Well, such transformational experiences can seem elusive and when they do happen, we're often unaware of what exactly happened to create that change and what can we do to replicate it to make it consistently happen again. Well, Bruce Ecker and his colleagues have been researching and refining the mechanisms of such change for a number of decades now and they've got a pretty good comprehensive grasp on what's going on when it comes to transformational change. Here's some of the broad strokes, in a nutshell. And to be fair to Bruce and his colleagues, you really need to read some of his writings to get full depth and breadth of what they're really saying. Our view of the world, the way we understand how things and people work, that are deeply embedded in our neural networks based on past experiences. These schemas or templates on how we interpret and respond to the world can often be hidden from our conscious awareness. We do things and say things, uh, we think things, but we're not aware of what's really underlying the emotional logic behind the way we are. If we can uncover what makes sense emotionally rather than purely logically, then we can discover the underlying rationale for why we did what we did, um, or why we did what we really didn't want to do, or whatever seems to be the problem. For example, Mary. She's working herself to death. She doesn't want to. She can see that it's not healthy and that she wants to be free to enjoy a more relaxed life, but she can't break away from this workaholic cycle that she's in. She feels somehow that it would, she'd be a bad person if she slowed down. In therapy, we find that there's an underlying emotional logic behind this behavior, and it goes something like this. If I stop striving to be the best at work, then I'll not be an acceptable daughter because only if I become very successful will my parents' sacrifice be worth it. So then I must keep working, even if it's killing me. Mary feels this is true, but cognitively she knows that it's not, it's wrong. Her parents, despite their sacrifice, don't want her to kill herself working, but the emotional logic is there, deeply embedded in her neural networks, driving her on. So what can be done? the transformational thing to be done is to overwrite that existing emotional logic with an updated, more realistic and self-compassionate understanding of what it is to be acceptable. This is what emotional memory reconsolidation is all about. And Bruce Ecker offers a number of steps uh, for transformational change to take place. Number one, we identify the symptom, wanting to stop overworking. And number two, we discover what is deeply embedded in the logic that is requiring the symptom. Um, for example, if I don't overwork myself, I won't be acceptable. And then number three, we look for disconfirming knowledge. That's an experience that disconfirms the emotional logic. Like Mary feeling accepted and loved by her dad for something that was totally under, unrelated to her work ethic. And then after these things have been identified, we can do what is described as an erasure sequence, basically activating the emotional logic that's driving Mary's behavior, making it emotionally real to her, and at the same time, activating the disconfirming knowledge, that experience that flies right in the face of the emotional logic, like Mary feeling loved and accepted by her dad for something that's totally unrelated to um, her achieving. This is called juxtaposition holding these two opposing things together um, in the one moment. And during this time, neural, neural networks that describe the emotional logic, for example, why Mary must be a workaholic, um, become unlocked and then rewritten with a new understanding of what it is to be acceptable. Finally, there's a verification stage to demonstrate if Mary still feels the same way about working herself to death for the sake of being acceptable or if she truly does not have the drive in her anymore, but is more content to relax without any striving or guilt. If the old emotional logic has been overwritten, then memory reconsolidation has done the job of transformational change for Mary. Well, 
There's a lot more detail and subtleties to emotional memory reconsolidation, but basically it's about rewriting the emotional logic of our brain's operating system so that we can think about and respond to the things in, in a more adaptive way. I think memory reconsolidation research and its application to psychotherapy is one of the most important things we therapists need to know about. If you want to know more, check out some of the articles on memory reconsolidation or coherence therapy on our website and buy the book, Unlocking the Emotional Brain.